Hi, my name is Michael Seidman. Thank you for taking the time to listen to these tapes today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myself so you know some of my credentials and then talk about options for enhancing your health. I currently direct the Center for Integrative Medicine at a large health system in the Midwest, and I founded this company, Body Language Vitamin Company, because I believe that there are appropriate lifestyle choices that we need to make, but I also believe that there are things that we need to do to supplement wisely. I also direct product development for Visalis Sciences, and I'm an author of a book, and I have several patents, and um, I also have held grants from the National Institutes of Health and other grant funding. And I work at multiple speakers' bureaus, and I'm a scientific or a medical advisor to corporations such as WebMD, BASF, uh, National Football League, Major League Baseball, and several startup companies. A little bit about my background. I graduated from the University of Michigan uh, with a degree in human nutrition from the School of Public Health. And then I went on to get my degree, uh, my medical degree, from the University of Michigan as well. And then I did a residency in ear, nose, and throat surgery, and then a fellowship in skull base and otologic surgery. I was always very interested in research and trying to find out answers and have been very interested in aging and I have close to a hundred publications looking at things such as hearing, aging issues, cancer. This has segued into uh, the hundred papers that we've talked about in book chapters to several patents with more pending. Um, I've developed several new procedures. I've had the opportunity to do nutritional healing with professional athletes, to work with Bud Selig of the uh, Commissioner of Baseball and to present before Congress as well. And I've been blessed to have been quoted in CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, O Magazine, Shape, and Men's Health, and many other journals, and was uh, recently interviewed as well on uh, Good Morning America. Um, so one of the quotes is some of the work that I've done with hearing-related issues, and uh, O Magazine was kind enough to reference our book. And you can see uh, I'm here with my lovely bride, Lynn, uh, and we've done some work uh, with uh, nutritional healing, and have uh, been at several cup parties and other things as well, which has been fun. I'm often asked what are the appropriate supplements to take, and this is uh, something that uh, they quoted uh, several experts. If you see on the side here, you can see Florine Mark, who started Weight Watchers. You can see Andrew Weil just about in the middle, and you can see my uh, shiny little forehead uh, on the far uh, uh, side of the screen, and you can see my list of things to take is longer than pretty much everybody else's. And it's interesting, I gave a talk at Harvard Medical School to 300 doctors in 1991 talking about neural injury, aging, and free radical biology. And when I got done, the first question was, excuse me, Dr. Seidman, do you take supplements? If so, which ones and where can we get them? And I had been designing them in my dorm room back at University of Michigan days. Uh, I had powders and vats of ginkgo biloba and other things of that sort, and I mixed them up. And the second question is, have you re ever written a book? And I did write a book uh, by uh, Warner Wellness, which uh, got me the little gig on Good Morning America you can see here with uh, Bill Ritter, and that was kind of a fun opportunity. I think it's also important to give back. I've been invited nationally and internationally. It was recently in India where I gave talks and operated, and, and actually they had uh, several hundred doctors from around the country, and we were in the operating room and it was piped in. And, uh, had the opportunity to work with patients and do cochlear implants and many other types of surgical procedures for patients there, as well as education of the doctors. I'd like to segue now and talk a little about health care in America. We spend more than any country uh, on this planet, more than $2.2 .2 trillion, and roughly 16 to 17 percent of the gross domestic product. And our life expectancy is now about 78 years, which is 45th behind the Swiss, the Germans, even Bosnia and Jordan, if you can believe it, our lifespan is not as good as that. You would think with all the money that we spend that we should be the best in class. Instead, we're really ranked 37th out of all countries. I work at a health maintenance organization, and I always argue we don't maintain anybody's health. We take care of you after you're sick. So the mindset that I have is why don't we swing the pendulum of instead of taking care of you after you're sick, let's prevent sickness, let's optimize health and wellness. So in many cases, as you can see from the slide here, our treatments in the conventional paradigm of, of medical care is a Band-Aid masking a symptom. And so I took this comic strip and the patient talks to the nurse and says, I stopped taking the medicine because, frankly, I prefer the original disease to the side effects. And you all have stories like that, I'm sure. So in my world, I talk about proper nutrition. It's essential for good health. You have to eat from the basic food groups. You have to have a sensible diet and moderation. And actually, the American Heart Association and the American Cancer Association say five to 10 helpings of fruits and vegetables per day. A great challenge to do for most of us, certainly. And I will tell you that basically you should stop listening, go outside, and start grazing on your front lawn because that's what you'd have to do to get that kind of uh, nutrient density into your diet. 
I will also caution you about being careful what you eat. I do recommend fish, generally speaking, but it should be wild fish. This is a study right out of science, which clearly shows us that the organochlorine contaminants, the mercury, the PCBs, the leads, and things of that nature, are much higher in farm-raised fish instead of the wild fish. So you have to be careful about what you eat as well. I am all about lifestyle, and I talk about things, no tobacco products, minimal alcohol, that's controversial. Actually, my latest NIH grant is studying extracts of red wine, and I'll talk to you about that when I talk about the antioxidant formula. We have the equivalent of 72 glasses of red wine in our antioxidant formula. Uh, so you can have all the benefits of the red wine, and you can still drive home. Um, but uh, I also recommend avoiding excess sun exposure, maintaining your appropriate weight, exercising regularly, simplifying your lifestyle, and reducing stress. And somebody had put this slide up in my laboratory, and they showed a busy executive, and he doesn't want to take on one more meeting because we're all doing more than we can chew. And the executive says, no, Thursday's out. How about never? Is never good for you? Sometimes you have to say no, certainly. One of the things that's interesting to look at is the recommended dietary allowances were started back in 1941 with the idea of meeting nutrient needs of practically everyone. What you have to realize is that recommended dietary allowances are safe and adequate levels, but they're neither minimal requirements nor optimal levels. They're neither minimal requirements nor optimal levels. The other thing that's kind of important is if you don't like what you hear in the press, wait another day because usually something different comes out. And there's a lot of controversy about this. I teach a course entitled Nutrition in Your Health, Fact or Fantasy. I've taught it for many years. And you have to be careful what you read and you have to be careful where you get your information from. So there's an article you can see referenced here published in the Journal of the American Medical Association which looked at mortality in randomized trials of antioxidant supplements. And this is not what the article said, but the headlines in CNN and Yahoo said vitamins increase mortality. And frankly, that's how people like you and people like me get our information. Even my doctor colleague said, see, vitamins can hurt you. What they fail to tell you is that this particular study eliminated 816 references, 747 trials, as the mortality was zero. It didn't support what they were trying to study, which clearly discounts well-established support for antioxidants in preventing disease. They also used a wide dose range, ranging from tiny amounts to, to very large amounts. And they also used a, a wide diversity in the amount of time. So they used studies that were weeks, some were months, and some were years. And of a possible 815 studies, they selected 68 of those studies. And many of them supplemented with a single nutrient, which we wouldn't expect to help. When I recommend nutrients, I'm talking about 70 to 90 specific uh, nutrients. And, and in conclusion, what they found out, and this is from Meyer Stamford, the professor of Harvard, said the study does not advance our understanding and easily leads to misinterpretation of the data, which is precisely what occurred. Uh, Balls Frey, who is from uh, the, the Linus Pauling Institute, said this is flawed analysis. The totality of the evidence indicates the antioxidants from food or supplements have many health benefits, including, including reducing your risk of heart disease, cancer, eye disease, neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So there's a lot of evidence that these types of studies are getting blown out of proportion, and you have to be careful with what you read and how it's interpreted. That's one of the things that I do for the health system I work for is to look at those studies, use our bio statisticians and see if it makes sense. What you can see here is I listed heart disease. Heart disease affects almost one out of every four Americans. It's the number one cause of death in the United States. We spend nearly a, a half a trillion dollars now taking care of heart disease. And what I want you to focus on is that it is largely preventable. That's right out of the American uh, Heart Association information. Cancer, same kind of story. Worldwide, 7 million deaths each year. It's the second most common cause of death in the United States. And cancer, again, is largely preventable. It's felt that two-thirds of cancer deaths are related to lifestyle choices. I'm often asked, well, come on, Seidman, you eat broccoli, carrots, spinach, cauliflower each and every day. And I do that. I take Saturday off because uh, moderation story. I don't like broccoli, cauliflower, uh, carrots, uh, and the like. But... Uh, it's something that I know is, is good for me. And if you do this reality check, uh, this is actually out of uh, Oregon's, Oregon State University, to obtain enough vitamin E from food to reduce your risk of heart disease, you'd have to consume 9 tablespoons of olive oil, 75 slices of whole wheat bread, 40 almonds, or 200 peanuts each and every single day for one single nutrient. So you can get it from food, but it doesn't make a lot of sense.
There are literally thousands of studies that have looked at things like vitamin E, beta carotene, vitamin C. These studies here looked at 30,000 Asians showing a 21% reduction in the risk of stomach cancer and a 10% reduction in esophageal cancers. Another study looked at selenium and showed that you can reduce your risk of prostate, colon, and breast cancer by 18 to 27%, but you have to have the right amounts and the right kinds. And that's what I've studied for years uh, in my laboratory for myself, for my family, for my friends, for you. Uh, Alzheimer's disease, just briefly, is a progressive degeneration of the brain resulting in impaired memory and behavior. We probably all know somebody who has this problem. This is linked, we think, to oxidative stress. Hence, the logic of antioxidants. There are many studies to show that there are aberrations or abnormalities in the mitochondria and with the, an excess amount of free radical generation. So oxidative damage has been shown to be present in brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease, and vitamin E from food has been shown to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. This is a quote from a study looking at vitamin use, and they found that the potential savings from a reduction in the relative risk of heart disease and improved immune function with subsequent reduced infection rates by providing adults with just a simple multiple vitamin is about 1.6 billion each year. I think the other important thing to remember just before I close is that a significant number of adults fail to get the amount and types of food to meet their essential energy and nutrient needs. And it has been estimated that about 2.2 billion, that's one third of the people on our planet, and they're not all in, in impoverished areas, have a micronutrient deficiency. And I have always said that all people should take multiple vitamins, antioxidants, and other nutritional supplements based upon the most recent body. Uh, of evidence. And all truth goes through three steps. First, it's ridiculed. Secondly, it's violently opposed. Finally, it's accepted as self-evident. And I want to leave you with the average annual mortality rates over the past 12 years from vitamins alone is felt to be one death per year, herbs, two deaths per year, smoking, 400,000 deaths per year, poor diet, 300,000 deaths per year, and pharmaceutical errors, 100,000 deaths per year. With that in mind, it's not likely that you're going to hurt people through appropriate, scientifically validated uh, supplements. And, and I want to say that we've developed specific supplements. You can either do this on your own by taking our flagship four. We can put this together for you in an AM and a PM pack. Differences for men, differences for women, which I think are very important. And it's kind of a nice system in the sense that you can actually pull this out and, and take your AM pack with you, uh, eat it after breakfast because you always want to have a, a meal and you always want to have a full glass of water to enhance absorption. And uh, thank you for your attention. I'm now going to break this down to the different supplements that we've developed just so you have some additional information behind the logic of why I think uh, appropriate lifestyle and nutritional supplementation are critical. Thanks for your attention.